75 years ago, 120,000 Americans and legal residents, only of Japanese ancestry, were rounded up, uprooted from their homes, their properties, their jobs, their schools, their communities, and were imprisoned in America's concentration camp for up to four years. These camps were scattered in seven different states of our country. Um, Arkansas, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, and um, California. Our only crime was our face. We looked like the enemy that bombed our country at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. General DeWitt and the War Department lied to our nation when they said that the reason why these Americans and legal residents were rounded up and sent away from the West Coast was because of national security and military necessity. But the FBI, the Federal Communication Committee, the Naval Intelligence Agencies, and other agencies of our country all oppose General DeWitt's order. But unfortunately, the, the clamor that was caused by the lies and rumors that were being spread by the, by the anti-Japanese factions of our country won the day. Since early 1900, our anti-Japanese factions had been trying to get rid of all the Japanese living on the West Coast. They supported the uh, alien land law, which prevented any immigrant from Japan of owning property. And so they were able only to lease land, land that the farmer said was useless for farming, like around airports, which were built on alkaline hard pan land, and along the coast were so hilly that the farmer said, let the Japs use those land. You can't grow anything there. But because of the hard work and the ingenuity of the Japanese American farmers, these terrible land was transformed into rich, productive farmland. When Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, it gave these anti-Japanese factions the perfect opportunity to exploit the fears of war and the hysteria of war by beginning to tell lies that the Japanese Americans were loyal to our enemy, not to our beloved country. This 40 years effort of the anti-Japanese movement was failing. For example, by the end of 1941, 42% of all the commercial truck crops were grown by Japanese American farmers, which was almost a fourth of our nation's total. 90% of all the vegetables in California were grown by Japanese American farmers. But when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, it was a perfect opportunity to exploit the fears and hysteria. And they began to tell lies that we were loyal to Japan. Unfortunately, our Lieutenant General John DeWitt, who was in charge of the Western Defense Command, swallowed hook, line, and sinker all these lies and rumors because basically he was a racist. The general in Hawaii, where there were more Japanese people living, refused to follow General DeWitt's racist order. I remember hearing after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor round up the Japs and put them in concentration camps. That was a common statement I was hearing. Lieutenant General John DeWitt lied to our nation, as I said, because it had nothing to do with the war, as you will hear later. There were 18 spies arrested during World War years. None of them were of Japanese ancestry. In 1980, 35 years after the camps were ordered closed by our government, the Congress established a congressional commission to investigate how such a tragedy could happen 
in a great democracy. In their report, Personal Justice Denied, this is what they stated in the book, uh, in that book. Unhappily, the false claims and stories on the West Coast in 1942 made respectable opinion. The old prejudicial propaganda of the anti-Japanese faction unopposed had won the day. The War Department and the President, through the press and politicians with the aid of General DeWitt, had been sold a bill of goods. The Commission's conclusion in the book states, the promulgation of Executive Order 9066 was not justified by military necessity. We're not driven by analysis of military conditions. The broad historical causes which shaped these decisions were race prejudice, war hysteria, and failure of political leadership. And I always add for emphasis, since early 1900, groups because of prejudice and economic greed had been trying to get rid of the Japanese people for 40 years before Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. This is a warning to us today that fears and prejudice based on ignorance and lies can lead to tragic decisions by politicians. In 1942, the government put out a propaganda film that tried to tell America what it was doing to us in 1942. The film says that it was doing what a democracy should. It was evacuating and relocating all these people to new pioneer communities with more room to live in with more jobs available. That was a lie. What the film did not say was that we were being imprisoned in America's 10 concentration camps with guard towers, with soldiers with guns pointed at us, not to protect us, but to make sure we stayed within the, the camp confinement. The film also said that we cheerfully and wholeheartedly cooperated. Can you imagine you being sent to prison and you wholeheartedly and cheerfully cooperate? My dear friend, Chaplain George Aki, who grew up in Fresno, and uh, he was in a theological seminary in Berkeley to prepare to become a pastor. He was a senior in 1942. By the way, he's, he'll be 103 this September 11, and he lives in Claremont, California, presently. I asked Chaplain Aki, what do you remember about 1942? And he said, When rumors were going around that we would all be rounded, rounded up and put into concentration camps, I was telling everyone that this would never happen. This is America. America does not do things like that. I said that this will never happen because we're Americans. But I was wrong. When the gates closed behind me at the Tamparan Detention Center south of San Francisco, my faith in America died. My faith in God died, and I died. That's how traumatic it was for all of us, young and old. Some people had told me, oh, you guys were mostly kids, so it didn't bother you. Wrong. I use a metaphor of incest to try to convey the trauma we experienced. Like innocent children, we loved our country. We adored our country. We were faithful as Americans. Suddenly we were being violated and accused of being disloyal, of being dangerous to our country. We felt the shame, the humiliation, the guilt, but we could only bury that 
and tried to move ahead to prove that we were just as good American as anyone else. When uh, Chaplain Aki told us about what he remembered of 1942, it really resonated with me because it put into words how we all felt at that time. My deep concern today is that I'm hearing politicians exploiting the fear of terrorism, of crime, and profiling people who are innocent, like the Muslims and those who come from Mexico. Today's opera commemorates the 75th anniversary of the signing of Executive Order 9066, so that we would be not reminded never to repeat, be condemned to repeat what happened back then. Thank you.
say it, you know, say it. We must go, I get lobby, please get the flags. Here are the flags. Oh, I could use a hamburger and a chocolate shake right now. Stay by me, I'll hold his hand. He wants a flag, he can carry mine. Let's stay together, shoulder to shoulder. Everyone look proud, and much we his good pastor. We are proud Americans, we fight for democracy. No fool will find that we are free to hear or die for our country. I'm for catching every Japanese in America, Alaska, and Hawaii now and putting them in concentration camps. Damn them. Let's get rid of them now. Congressman John Rankin. I am for immediate removal of every Japanese in the West Coast to a point deep in the interior. I don't mean a nice part of the interior either. Herd them up, pack them off, and give them the inside room in the Badlands. Let them be pinched, hurt, hungry, and dead up against it. Personally, I hate the Japanese. Henry McLemore, the San Francisco Examiner. There is more potential danger among the Japanese who are born in this country than from the alien Japanese who were born in Japan. California Attorney General Earl Warren, who later became Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. After investigating the Japanese Americans, the FBI found no evidence of disloyalty. General John L. DeWitt therefore concluded that this lack of evidence proved that we Japanese Americans were indeed disloyal because we had successfully covered up any such evidence. President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066. General John DeWitt announced that all Japanese Americans on the West Coast would be removed from their homes and put into camps. We had one, two, three weeks to sell our homes and businesses and farms all at a loss. Oh, 
us by the things we need. They think it's right that we sell at a loss. We'll be ruined. We Prison. They try to make life normal. There's a plenty of food. If you like a hundred ways to serve liver. There's a school for the children. Although hardly a textbook. Men work in the field. 
and be maintaining a camp. And women watch the children. There are various social activities, even a dance. Last New Year's Eve, a celebration of new beginnings. You could say, but we can't escape all this growing dust. They say that all of this is for our own safety. Then why do the guns point at us? My dear Amy, God, how I miss you. I wish I could write more often, but the 442nd combat team hasn't had much free time. The Battle of Monte Cassino was overwhelming. Many soldiers, some my closest friends, were cut down. The bullets from machine guns burst their bodies like water balloons. Others stepped on landmines or were hit by shrapnel, the ripping flesh sounded like zippers. Yet for several minutes, sometimes hours, those poor boys lived crying for their mothers and we could do nothing about it. The mountain is now strewn with blood and limbs and bodies. The stench of decaying corpses permeates the air. Soon fathers will pretend to be strong while mothers weep. They say war is hell. You don't know what hell is till you've seen war. 
I hope all of you are well and tolerating camp life. I hear about the prejudice. Over here, it's not like that. I'm just another American. I think about you and Robbie <laughs> and when he first knew that baseball. Thinking of you two keeps me going. No matter the past, Amy, my love for you will always live. Makoto. A letter from Makoto! Yes, oh no, no, I don't think I'll see him again. Amy, Amy, what did he say? This, this, and swaffling everywhere, and that his love is always
dance next week this time I want to go you're very lucky woman you have Makoto and he will be all right and you have Robbie who are you going are you single man why didn't you tell me who is he who are you going right. to fill in the gaps and a faded red blanket to line the inside. Two of the guards helped with the digging. They genuinely felt bad. Pastor Shima said a prayer. Dust to dust. Amy and I took turns shoveling dirt over little Robbie. Amy, the most. It was something she had to do. And 
the dust was everywhere. Dust. 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 I've been giving a new assignment as an instructor back in America. I'm coming home. It looks like the war is almost over for me. No more worrying. By the time you get this letter, I'll be almost home for an extended leave to see you and Robbie. Give my little slugger a big hug from me, would you? Love, Makoto. Camp officials allowed me to transfer to a new camp. It would be years before I would see Amy again. After the war, Makoto and Amy tried to make their marriage work, but eventually they did divorce. One thing though, why do I feel so guilty about Amy, about being Japanese American? Guilt is so often mixed up with compassion, a dangerous mixture. I need to get away from all of this dust.
And at Camp Manzanar, there was dust everywhere. This moving and tragic story of the Sisters of Manzanar are among the 120,000 other stories of those who were incarcerated during World War II in our concentration camps. Most of them are untold. Most of those who were submitted to the trauma of extreme humiliation shame and guilt survived and more than survived, living outstanding lives through the camp days and in the aftermath. Much of this can be attributed to the Japanese cultural traits deeply instilled in us, such as haji o kakenai de, whatever you do, don't bring shame to others, 
to your country and to yourself. Shikata ga nai. Don't get bogged down with what you cannot change and move forward with fortitude and integrity. And gaman, endure and stick to the noble path. People often ask me, did anyone try to escape? Why should we try to escape? We were innocent. We loved America, even though we were treated in such an unjust way. 33,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry soldiers fought for our freedom and democracy during World War II, while many of their families were imprisoned in America's concentration camps. The famous segregated Japanese American unit, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, became the most decorated fighting unit in U.S. military history for its size and length of service. This unit had the highest percentage of soldiers who paid the ultimate price to prove, that, to prove their loyalty to Americans as Americans. Most of these soldiers were very young, unable to fulfill their dream as Americans. 6,000 of these Japanese American soldiers served in the military intelligence service in the Pacific Theater helping to shorten the war by two years, according to General Willoughby of General MacArthur's staff. The observance of the 75th anniversary of the signing of Executive Order 9066 gives tribute to all who were so unjustly imprisoned and treated in America's concentration camps. I close with the moving words of our own Fresno native, poet laureate, of Oregon, Lawson Inada, who was incarcerated with his family in Jerome, Arkansas, and in Amachi, Colorado. When Lieutenant General John DeWitt gave his order for the imprisonment, we were given from 48 hours to two weeks to sell what we owned or to leave it all behind. General DeWitt stipulated that we could take with us only what we could carry. So Lawson Inada penned these words of tribute. Only what we could carry was the rule. So we carried strength, dignity, and soul.